What's up, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of The Extra Mile. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Turford, and I'm reunited once again with my for my PlayStation Drive co-host, Matt Swinski. Matt, how are you doing on this lovely, lovely Thursday evening, good sir, or Monday evening? Wednesday. It's I don't pizza, even know what day it is. It's pizza time, my dude. I'm excited. I'm so happy to be rocking with you once again. The PlayStation Drive revival. We will live on through Shredder's Revenge. I'm excited to talk about it with you, my friend. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm good to go. How are you doing? Yeah, I, I'm doing well as well. I'm also very excited to talk turtles with you. I think this is going to be a very fun conversation and it's a long time coming because, I mean, I'm a huge you know fan of the turtles games and, you know, this this uh, we have a new one to kind of call our own and I'm so excited to talk about it. But first, before we get into all that, if you want to support the show, there's a number of ways to do that. Number one, if you're watching this on YouTube.com slash Carpool Gaming right now, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And don't forget to ding, 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 ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we put up new videos or whenever we go live with any new podcasts. Also, if you're listening on auto feeds, don't forget to subscribe to us if you haven't subscribed already or rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you haven't done so already um and again this is up on all the podcast feeds so in case you're wondering you know why you're hearing matt and i if you're listening on the nintendo tribe feed you know hi we're it's matt and ryan from the xbox drive and the playstation drive so hello everyone um, also last but not least if uh you want some of our podcasts early as well as this one or some exclusive content head over to patreon patreon.com slash carpool gaming throw a little tip in the old tip jar and out comes content well Without further ado, it's time to jump into some Shredder's Revenge. This was developed by .emu and released just this week on uh, the 16th of June. Um, it's also on Xbox Game Pass as well as pretty much every console and platform out of the sun. So PC, Xbox, Switch, and uh, and PS4. So I'm excited to talk about this here. And uh, Matt, to start it off, I want to get get some introductions in as far as you know what your history is with turtles games because you you and i are of different ages so, so I, as far as i know you didn't really grow up in the arcade era of things where you know you weren't going to your probably weren't going to your local pizza place and playing a turtle so in time game arcade machine but but tell me what's your history with turtles games i so i wasn't in the age demographic where i was going to the to the pizza stores and playing with them fan dangled gizmos and gotchas on the arcade machines but i was in the era where all of those uh, arcade games were put on the game boy so i did play a bunch of the turtles titles back on the i think it was the game boy color what it would have been Advance? so there were there were three game boy games uh for for turtles none of them were game boy color specific but i believe radical rescue the third one had some extra game boy color enhancements but were none they of them were exclusive to game boy? boy color but you play them all on game boy color because they all the game boy games worked there were they just oh like they were just og game boy yes okay yeah. yeah so i had a game boy pocket back in the day so i used to play these um on game boy and i think i played a couple on game boy advance as well so i while i haven't actually ever like sat down and played um, Turtles in Time start to finish. As far as I remember, I did grow up loving a lot of the games uh, on the handheld systems and spent a lot of time with them there um, just because I just remember them being incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, I remember pizza. I remember elevators. Yep. And I remember I, I had one of those like um, you know, those flashback moments playing Shutter's Revenge when those little ankle biting robot things popped out of the ground. And I was like, the oh, God, wow. Yeah, I was like, oh, no, I remember you. I did not wish to be reunited with you, but I'm older and stronger now and I will defeat all of you. But uh, yeah, that's my kind of brief history. I also obviously have seen a lot of the movies, grew up on the cartoons. Um, so, uh, yeah, team, the TMNT has been in my life for quite a while, Ryan. But what about yourself? What's your history with the Turtles? Nice. So. As for me, you know, I'm the old man of, of the two of us here. So clearly, you know, I, I grew up with all this stuff. I mean, I was the, the, the prime age when the, the 1980s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series was on on TV. And I was, you know, watching it every Saturday morning. Uh, again, mostly most of these memories are tied to my, my brother Kyle. Him and I would, you know, spend so much time, you know, playing with Turtles toys and watching the, the Turtles cartoons growing up and and then going to our local arcade or even just lo local restaurants or anywhere else you would go to, because that's that's the thing with. In, in the 80s and 90s where you know you didn't just have to go to an arcade to go play arcade games a lot of times you'd go to your local pizza hut or you'd go to um like other like mom and pop restaurants and they would have an arcade machine or two in in the building and a lot of times it was usually like something like street fighter 2 or mortal Kombat or something like that but a lot of times it was the turtles arcade machine or the turtles in time arcade machine so um that's where we got our fill in where we we 
uh, had ton of tons of great memories growing up playing, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original arcade machine. Like anytime, you know, I'd walk into a, a place and I'd hear the turtles theme going off because you'd hear it like every 10 seconds, you know, with that <laughs> arcade machine, uh, you know, it would get me instantly excited and, and want to rush over there and throw some quarters in and just, you know, play and have a great time with it. And then um, the, the where we really got into it was on the NES and, and the Super Nintendo because um, we had ports of the original arcade machine game on uh, NES. And then we also had Turtles in Time, the, the port on uh, Super Nintendo. Um, and, and my brother and I kind of, kind of played those games to death. <laughs> and we, those games as well um and just had a great time with it so I, I i definitely really grew up with turtles games and and they were definitely like a big part of my childhood um to the point where like it was a lifelong dream of mine for a long time to actually own my own you know teenage mutant ninja turtles arcade machine in my own house um and then i kind of had that that dream kind of come true in a lot of ways with uh when arcade one up actually released their lineup of arcade machines um because if folks you know remember a long time ago you know a couple of years ago or even just not even just more recently with my you know when i moved uh to uh london or before i moved back to toronto i had a turtles arcade machine for the longest time for that reason um because i wanted to you know fulfill that goal of you know owning a machine and I, I played it all the time. I played it to death and, uh, you know, I was sad to part with it um, when I when I moved again. But uh, I have a lot of really special memories tied to, to that game. So, yeah, definitely like this totally hit the nostalgia bones for, for someone like me, for an old man who grew up with all this stuff. But I'm glad also it kind of, you know, you had kind of similar experiences, even though you had some different games to work with, because those it, Game Boy games are actually really good as well. In fact, we're going to get them re-released later this year with the Kalabunka collection at some point, too. So I'm actually really excited to go back and, and play those on modern consoles as well. But let's get into Shredder's Revenge itself. Talk, start talking about this new game from Tribute Games. Of course, Tribute Games, they're most they're best known for um, games like Mercenary Kings, um, as well as they, they've worked on some smaller titles like Panzer Paladin. Um, but this, this is their first you know run at like a brawler with a, with the, a franchise of this type. Like Mercenary Kings was similar in the similar vein, but it was also very different. Uh, mm-hmm. th- than a game like this but overall let's let's talk about the story mode because i think that's probably the best place to start with shredder's revenge as we kind of dissect the game um that's for the most part that's kind of what we, we would consider the main mode anyways or at least that's what i would and it is where it basically takes the all all of the arcade mode levels so basically 16 levels of of, of turtles action but then gives you it separates each level with an overhead map that you mm-hmm. kind of explore with the turtles van and then there's some quests and, and stuff you can go on so all in all matt what did you think about the the pacing in in the story mode and what do you think of just the story mode overall i loved it dude i loved it i went into it like i went into it expecting a good time i came out came out of it like laughing and having a joy uh destiny my co-host over on burnout brighter and i played through the entire thing together on stream um so like we like we were having a blast i think like the animations are on point the music is fantastic even the way that like the sound effects and everything is like sounds so like you know 30 years ago, they've completely perfectly captured the essence of the turtles. I thought the level design was largely really good. Um, I thought the story mode, obviously, in terms of like a quote unquote quality story, it's it's very much like a Saturday morning cartoon. And I like it even emulates that with the different episodes per, you know, that's that as they um, name each stage after an episode. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a blast. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And like I was expecting to have fun with it. I wasn't expecting to love it this much, um, nor was I expecting to be like texting my partner um, being like, when you get back, we're definitely playing this again together just because it's it's a blast. What about you, Ryan? As a longtime Turtles fan, how was it coming back to a story mode like this in a game uh, that seems to be almost like hand delivered to you? Mm-hmm. So the interesting about this story mode in this game was it basically just felt like the just playing the turtles arcade game but it was separated in like it, the, the, it was spaced out in an interesting way with the overhead map stuff where um i was getting the same kind of levels you'd find in you know T- turtles in time but then having that extra kind of you know section between uh levels that that added to the mix of it which for me i think killed the pacing a little bit for me where i almost prefer the arcade mode, which we're going to talk about later, um, where you're just playing all the levels in a row rather than um, going to the o- the open world mode, especially too, because I find that the open world mode, while it was interesting that there was some stuff to do there, 
I personally w- w- could just take it or leave it. Like I, I thought mm-hmm. it was okay. I didn't really think it was amazing. And I'm going to bring in actually uh, Mike at uh, Blaze Night Zero Nine Two Three on Twitter, who actually asked us when we were asking for questions for this episode. Did you find the collectible system as unfulfilling as I did? Just getting extra XP was not worth it for me. I would have liked to have the collectible missions unlock new moves or maybe some new concept art or, or something more interesting. And that's the thing. I think that the I, I like the fact that they tried to do to have it be more than just the normal levels with some stuff in the overworld. But mm-hmm. the, where it falls flat is that to, to Mike's point, you you're basically trying to gain extra experience for your your turtles. Um, but beyond that, you're not you don't really have like any other reason to go and do a lot of that stuff. So it just, it almost feels like fluff to me. And it it just, for me, I just feel like it kills the piece of the experience a little bit more than what I was thinking. But overall, I agree with you about all the individual levels themselves. I thought they felt great, but um, I just didn't really love the overworld stuff. But am I off base, Matt? What do you think about the overworld? No, you know what? Um, I didn't mind the level to level as much. I kind of liked seeing the little van, like the little, you know, car move across. Like it really did give mm-hmm. me that like kind of nostalgic flashback to like these old school types of games that we don't really get as much of this kind of story, uh, you know, this kind of thing anymore. But I will agree that the side content did feel pretty meaningless. Mm-hmm. Um, I was hoping that, I don't know, like I wasn't sure if we were going to get costumes. I wasn't sure if we were going to get like even like a shorter side stage. That's something that like Ollie Ollie World does incredibly well that like when you do accomplish like side quest in one of these levels, you get like a different kind of side quest, you know, shorter level that isn't as big and as grandiose as one of the main levels would be. Um, but I was kind of expecting a little bit more from it, especially because all you get is like a line of dialogue and it's like, oh, plus 10 or plus 50 or however much it was to your experience. So yeah. I think while it was cool looking for them, kind of like it was just really just break everything possible and not you know and try and find it um so i did feel like it was a little mindless in it like i would have rather them tied the challenges a little bit more to it in some way shape or form um but yeah i will agree that the side content did feel more thrown in than not um and i do wish that they had made it feel a little bit more meaningful or at least made me feel like i wanted to go out and look for these things rather than just kind of like happening upon them because i was busting everything at every level anyway yeah, exactly. Like it, it basically just encourages you to break everything, which I mean, to be fair, you know, in the, the old school arcade games, you'd still kind of do that with all the breakable objects anyways. Yeah. But even more so, it's just like you're more like slowing down in some of the levels to break everything. And it's just like, again, it, it was it was fine. Um, the night the nice thing about it is I love and kind of the best part about those things were kind of the callbacks to the 80s cartoon and some, some of the characters that that make cameos because of it, you know, from that original series. I do like that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it just, you know, tickles my nostalgia bone, you know, being, you know, an 80s, you know, Ninja Turtles fan. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, you know, I can, I could have probably done without it. Or maybe again, I would have loved like a different set of items or even again, like concept art or something like that. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. even need to be like an in-game, you know, item to use anyways. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, th- that being said, I think this is a good way to transition to the upgrade system which is built into the story mode only. Um, the arcade mode doesn't use any of this stuff where essentially, you know, you'll earn XP for your turtles as you play through it, um, as you basically earn points for, for each, you know, character that you select. And a- as you play through it, they don't physically get stronger and it doesn't play with their stats at all, but um, it does give you, you know, the ability to have an extra life for each level or um, store up even a- an additional super move or things like that. Like it's, it's it, the, the, you get a couple new moves, but for the, most part you're you're just going through it with just the uh with kind of the standard sets each character has and i will say i can already tell like going for the achievement to level up every character in the game is just going to take forever and it's going to feel like a slog <laughs> like i can yep. already tell it's going to take you're going to have to play through this game like nine times essentially to to manage to do this i think mm-hmm. each each play full playthrough of the of the story Without the collectibles, I would say you might level one character or come close to it. But. Yeah, I I don't know. I thought that the system was I didn't even realize things were happening until Destiny and I both realized that I could do things that she couldn't. Mm-hmm. And it was just like one of those things where we're like, oh, OK, I guess there is some sort of upgrade system or I guess there is some sort of leveling system. I thought we were both getting these things together because they were tied to a certain moment or a certain boss fight or whatever. I didn't even realize that this was happening until about halfway through the game. 
I, I do wish that it was it maybe not kind of, you know, fully explained, but like at least integrated into everything a little bit that a little bit better. Again, yeah. even if the side content unlocked the kind of permanent, le- you know, permanent life up or whatever it was. Um, this to me, again, just felt kind of more there than it was anything else. And ultimately, I kind of felt like, I don't know, at least playing on the like the standard difficulty. I mm-hmm. never lost more than I think one life or maybe two lives a level and like. A lot of the special attacks that you get, like I would usually save them up for a boss or use them on a big group of enemies. So using one versus the other didn't really feel too different. Like I kind of feel like they're again more there than not. While they are cool additions and using these things for the first time um, is cool. And again, even that um, what is it called? Is it the radical mode when you get all three yeah, bars? Radical up? mode. Again, yeah. even that I was kind of like, this doesn't feel worth it. I'd rather just use my special three times over. Like it there there were these things that like just didn't feel like they made the experience better. I don't think they made them worse by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, yeah, of course. I just think that they were there more so than they felt like intrinsically part of the story mode, Ryan. But whatever. Am I off base here? Where are you at with this? Yeah, actually, um, with the super moves in particular, like I felt like you could really, really abuse them in a lot of ways because mm-hmm. all you have to do to refresh your your super meter, you can you can refresh it you know, gradually by attacking troops. Or when you when you're in a screen between enemies, or if you find a, a position in battle where you're not going to be attacked, you just press the taunt button and it refills one, and you can just sit there and just charge them all up. So what I, what I did in some of the later levels, Matt, is I would just play through them and just use nothing but supers and not even bother attacking because it was more efficient doing it that way. Because you could store three, oh three of them at that God. point. Or when when eventually when I had Raph, uh, which was, of course, my mind turtle, of course, you know, fully maxed out, like I, I would store four of them and then just like just use them over and over again. Because because to your point, you could go into radical mode, Matt, at that point. But why even bother? Because like the, the boost to attack that you get isn't even as powerful as as doing the super move four times, essentially. The more you know, you just blew my mind, dude. I didn't even realize the taunt (laughs) did anything. Yeah, that's what the taunt's there for. You know how confused we were, even just with like high five life passing mechanic? We both tried. We kept both kept pressing it at the same time together. And I was like, our life's not changing. And it wasn't (laughs) until like halfway through the game that we realized, no, the one who initiates it gives the life away. Again, it's things like this that I was kind of like, come on, man. Yeah. So then um, I'm guessing you probably didn't spend too much time in the turtle dojo then. No, which is because the, if you go to the turtle dojo, which all, which gives you like a breakdown of what levels you can find the collectibles in, which I thought was a nice move for them to do. OK, so then you're not constantly wondering, you know, what levels the collectibles are. And if you go in there, it also gives you a bunch of tooltips about the level up system <laughs> and breaks down what each one is and then talks about, you know, the taunt system and whatnot. So, yeah, that's how I learned all that stuff, because likewise, if you get if you taunt. Um, and you're like halfway through, you know, earning a earning um, a super move um, and you get hit, um, then you lose basically any of that progress essentially as well. So there's like a some kind of risk associated with that, I guess. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, so there are certain things you can do to break <laughs> the game. Um, but I also think that the difficulty being on the easier side, I, I talked about this with Sean Kirby earlier today, but I think that this that's actually a good thing. I kind mm-hmm. of like that the difficulty is not too difficult because the main reason why the old turtle games uh, on the arcade were so difficult was because they were basically designed to eat your quarters. They were designed to be difficult games so that you'd keep popping quarters in to, you know, get extra lives and stuff like that and to keep playing. Whereas, you know, this game doesn't need to do that. And of course, I like the fact that it's skewing towards, you know, a younger audience where it's just more accessible to people, like more accessible to the casual gamers or to mm-hmm. people that, you know, aren't, you know, super good at, you know, beat em up games. Cause th- this is certainly probably the easiest beat em up game I've probably ever played of all time. Um, but I think that's a good thing. I like the fact that it's like that. And also, you know, if you want more of a challenge, there is a way to do that with the arcade mode and then playing on the hardest difficulty. Like it, it gets bonkersly difficult if you want it to. And that I completely agree with you. I like it's 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 Ninja Turtles. I don't think anybody should be going into this expecting Dark Souls. Like, come on, like this is meant to be like, you know, uh, uh, let's kick butt with my friends kind of game. And I thought that the difficulty for the standard mode for the story mode was perfect. Like I said, I like working together with Destiny, you know, we went down once or twice if that an episode, but again, we were having so much fun with the experience that I never was sitting there being like, this is too easy. I can't believe that this is happening. I'm glad mm. that that option is there for people because there are people who will come to this looking for those experiences that they had, you know, once a one, you know, a day ago, but like, 
I'm glad that I think I think it was perfectly balanced for for what this game needs to be, especially with the story mode. It feeling like, you know, like I said, like a Saturday morning cartoon more so than like uh, me beating my head against the wall trying to get through level three. Yeah, exactly. Or or likewise, you know, running out of continuous halfway through and then you basically have to start the game over again. Yeah, that, that that's not interesting. But uh, of course, you know, I also thought like because I saw some people kind of complaining a bit online about this, about the, the length of the game and how you can beat the whole game, whole story mode in like two hours. But I think that's the perfect length for a game like this. Mm-hmm. Like you don't like it's all about, you know, replaying the game over and over again rather than, you know, giving you. 10 hours of content or whatever and trying to trying to give you like 10 hours of story mode like i'm glad that they they at least the, the developer knew enough to know like what type of what the pace should be for a game like this and how you know a shorter is better for a game like this i think yeah agreed like i love that you can beat this in one sitting i love that you can go start to finish with it and you know in one go again like i i don't think all games need to be eight, 10, or even 120 hours. Like, I think this was the perfect bite size. There is there's reason to go back if you want to. Playing through with the different characters is a different experience as well. Again, like this game for me is just meant to be fun. And I think it nails that. I, I don't think it overstayed yeah. its welcome because I think some of these games can overstay their welcome if they are four or five hours, where again, you're not really going to have anything massively different happening just because of the way that the game is built. Two hours, yeah. two and a half hours, perfect for this kind of game. Absolutely. And again, I think the story mode, you know, all of our quips aside, I, I still think it's great. I mm-hmm. think it's fantastic. And you're good. Y'all are still going to really enjoy it if you haven't, you know, picked this game up yet or haven't played it on Game Pass. Honestly, I think, you know, this is the, the, the type of game that's like a perfect Game Pass game with the, I, with a story mode like this. So. I agree. And I think it's also one of those things where it's just like, I don't think, at least for me, when I was actually playing through the story mode and even a couple of days after, none of these things even came up on my mind. It wasn't until that we said, let's sit down for and actually do this, you know, extra mile. That, and I so I started thinking about it more critically. Like, again, mm-hmm. it's it, unless you're really going in with the, you know, with a with the microscope trying to figure out exactly what's wrong with this game. Even the issues that we have might not even pop up to you because you're just going to have two hours of fun and then you're going to move on. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Moving on, I want to talk about some of the other modes before we we sign off, starting with arcade mode, which is essentially just all the the, the levels in the, the the story mode, but just played in a row like an arcade machine. Um, you get a certain number of continues. So you get three continues as well as, you know, three lives that you can use throughout the game. And you'll actually earn lives as you go as well um, by, you know, getting points just like the old uh, arcade games or the, the Turtles in Time port for uh, Super Nintendo, if you've ever played that. Uh, and this is where I actually think the game actually really shines because I, I I know when I'm going to go back and play this game, it'll probably be through the arcade mode instead of the story mode because you still get all the cutscenes you got in the story mode. Mm-hmm. And you still have um, like all the same fun combat that you get in the story mode. But I, I just like that it's a more refined experience and more true to, you know, what I'm used to from a Turtles game, whereas, you know, that arcade kind of, you know, pick up and play and just have fun kind of mode. So yep. that's what I, I really enjoyed the arcade mode I, and playing it that way. Also, what's nice, too, is that you don't have to worry about the level up system because you already have all the abilities available to you that you earn from the level up system, um, except for radical mode, because you only get one special bar instead of three. But as we talked about, you know, neither of us really think that that radical mode's too good anyways. So mm. there's no real point to it. Um, whereas I, I don't think you got a chance to check out arcade mode, right, Matt? No, I'm saving my next playthrough for when my partner comes back from her trip. So like I, I played through it once. Yeah. I enjoyed my time with it and I'm kind of saving round two for when she's back. So I haven't dipped back into it as of yet. Makes sense. So then I have to ask you then, because you were saying you played with Destiny. You you played the online, right? Yep. How how was that experience? Did it did it break? No issues whatsoever. We were in the red pretty much the entire time, like when it was showing the ping. Um, mm-hmm. We were both playing on PC, both playing through um, Game Pass on PC. Um, and like there weren't any slowdowns that I noticed. We didn't have really any issues. Um, everything worked perfectly. It was a bit of work. Joining the same game once we got in together, we were off to the races and had no issues for the rest of the time. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, I only got a chance to play with a bunch of randoms, but all my experiences were really good. Like I was playing six player with random people, nice. cross play, no latency or, or any issues on Xbox Series X is where I played this game. So honestly, I think the online is really solid for this game and kind of where it's at as well. If you don't have six friends at home to play with, like Mm -hmm. I think playing with six random people is still a lot of fun, too. So um, and I definitely think the online modes kind of where it's at if you don't have like local co-op, if you don't have six people around and six (laughs) controllers to play with it. Like, I think I think this that it's totally serviceable 
and and great. Like, I don't think there's any issues with it. I was a little bit worried going to it that maybe, you know, especially because with Scott Pilgrim, when that came out, you know, Sean Capri and I famously tried to play that game with, with each other online. And man, like the, the latency Woof. was real bad it, it, with that game. And I noticed even playing the game like Streets of Rage 4 also I ran into issues with. So I was kind of, kind of expecting some issues with this, but no, every every game that I played and every game that you played by the sounds of it sound sound fine once you're in the game. So yep, no problem. Which is awesome to know. Um, and as far as the music and the visuals, that's one thing I want to give you know points to because the soundtrack by T Lopes in this game, uh, number one, I just discovered, you know, an hour before we started recording that, that the soundtrack is on Spotify. And I was listening to it before we started, and I'm like, yes, the soundtrack is so good. So good, dude. Yeah. Um, like even just the, the, even the rap songs that they have in there are, are, are really well done. Um, and just the music overall, fantastic part of the game and the visual design, you know, it, it, it's, you know, pixel art with the turtles. And then you've, you've got all the, the, the enemies and, and the turtles themselves, like lovingly crafted in this game. And this game's a gorgeous looking game to look at. One of the best looking games of the year, I think. Agreed, you know, I think. dude. The, the, everything, the animations are so slick and so smooth. Everything about the art style is perfect. Um, and yeah, the music, there were multiple times when we were playing where I was like, wow, this song is fantastic. Like every, it, it kind of like perfectly marries its aesthetic together with the music and everything about it. It's, it's fantastically put together. Yeah. And there's also some musical callbacks as well to some of the older turtle games as well, which I love as well. So if you've played those games, you know, you're going to get a kick out of it. And then also on the audio side as well, they have the original voice actors back from the, you know, 1980s turtles cartoon. I will say you get mixed results with that, where I think, you know, some of the characters are, are voiced really well. Whereas, you know, when I played as Raphael, who's kind of my my main turtle mm-hmm. to play as, um, he's he's voiced by Rob Paulson, who all, does the, the voice of, you know, Pinky on Pinky the Brain and some other things. But you can definitely tell when you're playing it, it's like old man Rob Paulson rather than, you know, <laughs> you know uh, his younger self. Um, so it almost felt like I was playing like an o- old man Raphael instead. Um, so I, th- I feel like th- it could be a little bit hit and miss, but I, I did love the fact that they brought, you know, all the original turtles out of retirement for this game. Yes, yeah, so that's awesome. I didn't even know that. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah. So then before we get to the listener questions, Matt, and before we get to our overall thoughts, uh, since I, I mentioned what turtle I played as, what, what tur- who is your main for this game, Matt? Leonardo, dude, through and through. I think that surprises absolutely no one to know that I'm a, I'm a Leo stan. So, yeah, I rocked Leo. My God, the two swords. He just can't deal with the two swords. Just, just I, need him. I really love playing his Raph in this game, even though he's got like the worst range in the game. Like he's so fast and, and powerful. Like I just really enjoyed his play style. I thought he was really, really cool. And then my my alternate uh, would be Master Splinter. I really enjoyed playing as him this time nice. too. But uh, anyways, let's get into our final questions before we kind of wrap things up. We're going to start with Todd Oxtrat Toxer, who asks, what arcade game do you want to get this treatment now i'd love to see a new simpsons brawler and actually todd as soon as i finished this game my first thought was like please give the simpsons to tribute and dot emu because i would love to see like a new simpsons arcade game in this style based off you know the original simpsons arcade machine another one that i think would be really solid would be x-men and then getting like an x-men brawler like this like the like the old you know x-men arcade machine or even maybe going back to another like konami brawler franchise and something like you know uh um sunset riders i think would be really cool um that's like a cowboy like western uh beat 'em up game um but it was a ton of fun to play back in the arcades like it was um one of those things where i was and never super into it in the arcades itself but when it eventually got like a uh, a home vi- like a home release on the genesis or the super nintendo or playing it nowadays on playstation 4 through arcade archives i think that game's amazing so I would love to see like maybe another crack at a game like that. But Matt, what do you think about this question? Because I know, again, we're of different eras. So I, I think I'm curious to know what you would think about this. I mean, you stole my answer with X-Men. Um, X-Men was like, I have so many fond memories of that game. Um, I would love like an Avengers or Spider-Man game done like this too. Like uh, for me, I like again, like, love me love me my marvel and i think having those characters like especially if you do like a new age avengers with like you know with tossing spider-man tossing miss marvel tossing uh captain america iron man and like you're gonna get an awesome game out of that so for me i would love to see a marvel property done in this style because i think it'd be a blast 
Nice. Yeah, actually, real quick, I guess I'm going to go off topic for a second here. Mm-hmm. Matt, did you ever play the the uh, Avengers beat em up game on Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis? I didn't. I did play one. There was an arcade Avengers game, I think, at some point that I think I remember playing when we went to Chicago we, a few mm-hmm. years ago. There was like this massive arcade bar that we went to. And I remember playing and we played the X-Men one. And I think we also played an Avengers one. Um, so I would love to, to, you know, have a crack at those again. Yeah, man, those games are real good. Like, they, I would love to like because we're getting a collection like the Cowabunga collection. I would love if, you know, we got if Marvel and Disney did something like that. But with the older, you know, Marvel mm-hmm. arcade games, throw in the X-Men arcade game, throw in, um, you know, the the um, the Avengers game and, and all kinds of other stuff. The Punisher game. I think all that stuff would be super cool in a collection. But mm-hmm. moving on. We got Nagachaka at Nagachaka on Twitter who asks, this game is radical and bonacious, but if there's a sequel in the future, what improvements you'd like to see? And actually, we got uh, a sequel um, suggestion from Dustin at Jadis Von Metal who said, I'd like to not hear Cowabunga after the end of every level. It's a lot, a whole lot, just a lot. Besides that, same thing with new levels and more Mike Patton. Uh, but Matt, what, what would you like to see from a sequel to this game? See, I want the sequel to this game to take a page out of Duck Game, if you've ever played that. And I want a Cowabunga button. Let me let me mercilessly <laughs> Cowabunga whenever I want, almost egregiously. Um, on top of that, which is my biggest ask for a sequel, um, I think out of a sequel, I'd really want just some more level variation. Um, mm-hmm. While I do love the levels that we have in this game, I do feel like they are a little bit samey. Like they are just like, you know, go, go to the right and there's an elevator or go like, I would like, want to see them get a little bit weirder with it. Give me an mm-hmm. elevator that has like platforms falling off and you are fighting in certain a- like areas of it. Like I just want them to get a little bit weirder with the level design, a little bit more um, inventive with it. Cause while I do think this really nails the classic feeling of the game, I think for a sequel, I wouldn't want just more of it. I want the, the you know, more of it, but just messing with the level design and the structure a bit. So that would be kind of my biggest ask for what I'd want out of a sequel. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, actually, honestly, Matt, I think that's a great point. Like, I would love to see like more uh, like chances taken with the level design and just mm-hmm. them do it, getting like really wacky and crazy with it. Um, I think that's that's a great idea. And and to to go as uh, in a different direction, I'd say also just you know tweaking if they're going to do another story mode, you know, tweaking some of the aspects of it, you know, maybe uh, helping the pace of it, um, and, and just changing around some of the side quest stuff. If they're going to do something like that again. I would love to see like different types of rewards like cosmetic rewards or um even again like concept art or other things that that mike mm. was kind of suggesting i think that those along with your points i think would be would make for an awesome sequel if cowabunga formula now cowabunga it's pizza time cowabunga <laughs> and then last question comes to us from court lalonde at court lalonde you might know him matt who he's uh he asked the question which turtles or character in the turtle universe best represents each member of carpool gaming? So we've got the way I want to propose this question, Matt, there's six of us in carpool gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, and then there's six playable characters in this game. So how do we match them up? First of all, I have to say Sean Capri is probably Leonardo. Cause R- Ryan, I mean, he, he's, can I interrupt for just a second? Can, What's up? Matt? I, I want you to do to use the six characters that we have. I've I've researched and prepared for this question. So you go off first. And then if you'll <laughs> let me, I'll, I'll introduce my list. OK, sounds good. So, yeah. So uh, with these characters, I'll say Leonardo, Sean Capri, of course, because he's the leader. OK, um, we we have to have a party dude. And I think the closest to a party dude is probably court. I guess he's the one that actually strikes me as the, the per- type of person that'd go to parties. <laughs> so Court LeVon is officially Michelangelo. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually lo- put, had you down as Donatello, Matt, because you're like the, the intellectual one um, <laughs> of the group. Anyways, because of my blue box theories, you're definitely making the smart decision. So I, 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 I put Don- you as Donatello. Um, I'm the sarcastic one, but Normally, I would lump myself in with Raphael, but I'm actually going to say that I'm probably Master Splinter because I'm the old man of the group. OK, um, even though Quartz technically older than me, I feel like the old man of the group talking to you guys about Atari 2600 <laughs> stuff, <laughs> a bunch of like weird random games. Like, I, I feel like I feel like that role pretty well. OK, um, and, and, you know, Kato's the famous one. She's the one on TV all the time. So she's April O'Neil. OK, and that just kind of fits in. And then the only other characters left, you know, we got Casey Jones and we got Raphael and 
I'm going to say Garrett Bland is Casey Jones. That's where I'm going to slot in. I feel that energy. Because he, he's not sarcastic in any way, he, but he'll beat you up with a, a hockey with a stick hockey in stick, a yeah. back alley if, if, if <laughs> you, you make us mad. So there you go. Okay. That's, that's how I view the group. But Matt, give me your okay, well-researched so, presentation. So listen, I put a lot of thought into this, okay? Um, and and I, I really wanted to pick some famous characters from TMNT, okay? So oh, Sean, geez. Sean is stainless steel Steve. I think that's self-explanatory. Um, of I, I think for you, I picked Gathano because it's just one to one. It's pretty much exactly it. Um, for for Court, I went with Napoleon Bonafro- Bonafrog, which I mean, like you know, Court Napoleon Bonafrog. It's like it's like the same thing. Um, I mean, they both wear funny hats, so it yeah, just works exactly, a hundred percent. For Garrett, I picked. Um, obviously, there's only one correct answer for this. Um, is Toad Baron? It's just I, I think it makes too much sense. Yeah. Um, for, for Kato, I went a little bit into the weeds. I picked a bit of an obscure character. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Donatello. Um, so with Kato, I, I picked for, I picked Donatello for Kato. Is Kato the smart one? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I, I think she is. I think she very much is. Um, and as for myself, there was only one real answer, Ryan. And I thought long and hard about this, but I, I, I had to just put myself as cuddly, the transdimensional cowlick. I think it's just, <laughs> I think it makes perfect sense. Um, I think I, I don't need to explain any of these any more so than I already did. Uh, this of is course. the perfect list. It's definitive. I was going to say, I gave you all the mainstream lift and Matt just <laughs> Googled most obscure Turtles characters and then assigned people, essentially. I'm glad uh, we I, had this talk. <laughs> I, I, I put a lot of work into this. Uh, Court and I actually did this on the PlayStation Drive last week as well. So if you're curious about his thoughts as to who each person is, you can check that out there. But uh, it's, uh, not, it's not as good as my list. Clearly, it just isn't. Anyway, so overall, we got to give our overall you know thoughts on this game. I think we've, we've talked about this a little bit, Matt. I mean, we both are pretty high on this game, I feel like. I think, you know, it's a solid recommend, but mm-hmm. I have to ask you the question that came up on Twitter a whole lot after people got their hands on this game. Is this the game of the year halfway through the year? Is this the front runner for game of the year? Is it better than Elden Ring, Matt Go? I don't think so. I think while this is really good and a lot of fun, I think a lot of people are kind of playing off of the nostalgia more than anything else. While I do think this game is spectacular, I think it's very good in the world that it lives in. I wouldn't go so far as to say that this is like a like a, a new experience or something that really kind of pushes the bar in any way, shape or form. And I don't think it has to be. I think it nails what it needs to do. I think mm. I can easily see why this would end up on a lot of people's game of the year lists. But I personally wouldn't say that it's the game of the year so far, but I can understand why someone might say that. But, you know, you know, for me, I think it's just it plays things a little too safe for it to be like the crowning jewel of this year so far. But, Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, I I probably wouldn't even put it in my top three or four, to be yeah. honest, for this year. And I again. I'm, I'm a, a, the target demographic for a game like this. And even I'm kind of in that boat where a, 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 where I definitely was high on it when I first started playing it, but definitely thinking about it and then even going back and replaying it, like it just, it, it, it was, I was having a great time with it, but it also just didn't feel like it was that, that caliber of game to mm-hmm. be kind of the game of the year. But I definitely think it'll probably definitely be in the conversation at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I would imagine it makes like, the top 10 of something like the game awards or voting or something like that at yep. the end of the year. So I definitely think it's going to get people in its corner for sure for, for game of the year. But I think for, for us, I think the front runner for, for you and I would still probably be Elden ring or something like that. Um, I know for my personal list, it's, it's still probably, you know, a little bit different. It's something like the Corey or um, even something like tiny Tina. I, I enjoyed more than this, but either mm-hmm. way, Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, fantastic game, mm-hmm. you know, hats off to, to both Tribute and .emu for putting out a new, you know, Turtles game in this style. I, I think this is something we need more of, mm-hmm. um, and I'm glad they, they decided to do this, and especially after the love that DM, .emu had with some of the, like, Streets of Rage 4 and now this, like, they're on a roll with games, and I can't wait to see what they do next. Whenever they announce whatever their, their next kind of brawler project is they're doing over there, like, I'm going to be there day one waiting for it. So I can't wait to see more. But anyways, Matt, we got to get going. But before we go, Matt plugs go. Yeah, you can find me over on Twitter at burnout underscore Matt. If you want me to assign you your um, uh, your very famous Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles character, find me there um, because I will research. Um, And otherwise, you can find us over at YouTube.com slash burnout writer where we do all things video games, mental health and social justice every week. Very nice, my friend. As for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. You can find us on Twitter at Carpool Gaming, on YouTube at youtube.com slash Carpool Gaming, and on podcast services 
around the globe. So Matt Sawinski and Ryan Turford, I this has been the extra mile all about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. And we're out. Cowabunga! Cowabunga! Cow!